All right, so the last thing um, we're going to do um, are ceilings. So um, we'll do doors next time. Um, you could probably do the doors without me, um, having seen how the windows work. But um, so ceilings are actually pretty straightforward too. Um, let's take a look at the reflected ceiling plan. So if I zoom in on a reflected ceiling plan, we'll come up here and we'll work on this area right here. You'll see the callouts for the elevation. So nine feet, nine feet, closets are at eight feet, right? This area over here, over the counters and stuff is at eight feet. So we'll come in and do um, these bedrooms right here and the closets. And then we'll come over um, and take a look at how you might do a sort of unbounded area. So if we look at this 10 foot ceiling over here, it has like a fur down to an eight foot and then a fur down over here and we'll talk about those a little bit too. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing we wanna do is actually make a reflected ceiling plan. If we work in a floor plan, this floor plan is cut at four feet. And so if we put in a ceiling that's eight feet above, of course, we're not gonna see it. So Revit allows you to make a ceiling plan view by going to your views, your view tab, and go into the plan view pull down and picking reflected ceiling plan. It then gives you any levels that you wanna make, that are possible to make a reflected ceiling plan from. And so we wanna make a reflected ceiling plan of top of slab. So highlight it and click okay and it gives us a reflected ceiling plan view. If we look at the view range over here, you'll see that the view range is set, the top is set to level above, which is the bottom of the parapet. Really should set this to top of plate instead of bottom of parapet, and set the view depth also to top of plate. So basically it's looking up from level one to top of plate, it's cutting at seven foot six. So seven foot six are from there and then it's looking up. So if I click okay, I can come in here and basically we're just looking up at the ceiling here or at the roof, really the underneath of the roof. And we can come in and start placing these rooms. These are nine feet and these are eight feet. So if I go to architecture and I go to ceiling, right it gives you an automatic ceiling option a height and then a ceiling type here so if i go to the pull down i can pick drywall on metal stud right so i'll pick that and we might update it later um, but let's go ahead and pick that guy and we'll leave it at eight feet and you'll notice if i highlight closed areas so bounded areas it will place the ceiling in them so if i left click it's actually placing that ceiling, but we can't see it because there's no pattern on it. So if I come in and pick the two by two ACT system, so this is an acoustic ceiling tile, which we're not gonna use, but, and I change this to nine feet, and I come and highlight in there, you can see the ceiling, right? So it is often helpful to come in and pick the ceiling itself. So if I tab select in here, and get that ceiling, go to edit type, edit the structure, figure out what is on there, the gypsum wallboard, right? You can come in and give that a surface pattern. So if I give it a surface pattern of, you know, gypsum plaster, um, and then click OK, and then click OK, and then click OK, you'll see that gypsum plaster appear right in there. And so if I tab select in, pick that, and right click on it and select all instances, visible in view, and flip that out for those guys, you'll get your ceilings in. The nice thing about the automatic ceiling is that if you move the walls, the ceiling will adjust for it, which is really nice. So now we have a ceilings in there. Now, if we wanted to put a ceiling in here, right, and I go to architecture ceiling, it automatically picks like the entire room. So if we wanted this ceiling to be at 10 feet, you know, it would make a whole series of, the whole ceiling would just cascade across there. So instead, I'm gonna go to sketch ceiling and I'm gonna use pick walls. So I'm gonna pick the walls that I can that would be at the edge of this right so that one and that one 
and then this one, right? <clears throat> there is no wall really here at the edge of this guy, right? So if I go, let's go to medium, and you can see the edge of that beam. I could probably pick maybe the edge of this wall, right? So if I go in and pick this one, right? But I want to flip that to the other side of the wall. And then maybe this one I want to flip to the inside of that wall. Now I can trim these guys out to make a closed loop and use that as my ceiling. So you can just sketch in a ceiling. The bonus of picking the walls is that if you pick the walls and move that particular wall that you picked, it will update the ceiling. But you still have to be careful if you don't use automatic ceiling. So if I hit check, right, it puts that wall in there and maybe I want to make that. The drywall and if I come in and move my sort of test section through here we can double click and you can see here's my 10 foot ceiling and here is my 9 foot ceiling okay so go ahead and start putting the ceilings in and I'll come back and talk a little bit about furring walls